Hello friends, I am Sanjay Gupta. In this video, I am going to discuss about how you can create forms in HTML. Before starting, you can note my Android app that is Tech Image. You can download this app so that you can learn programming. So coming on to the topic that is HTML form. First of all, you have to understand that you have to use form tag so that you can implement forms in HTML. The output of form will be displayed on respective web browser which, are, which we are, you are using. Inside form tag, you have to implement form elements. So in this video, I am going to discuss about input element. There are uh, other various elements available like uh, checkboxes, radio buttons, drop down list, etc. So about these uh, elements, I will be discussing in my another tutorials. So in this tutorial, I am going to uh, discuss about input element. So you can see this example here form tag is opened and closed inside form tag. I have used input type text twice. So it will create two input boxes where I can type first name and last name. Then identification of these input boxes are given with the help of name attribute. So first box name is first name and second text box name is last name. So this identification name is required when you will be connecting your HTML script with any server side scripting language like PHP or GSP. So right now this is optional. You can remove this, but if you are connecting your HTML with, with any other scripting language, then these names are required. So now I'm going to execute this code for you so that you can visualize how input type text will be appearing on web browser. So I have implemented form tag here, then simple text first name is written here, then BR is used to break the line. That's why input type text will display in new line. Then again BR, then last name in next line will be printed, then BR will separate the line, then second input type text will be displayed and then form tag is closed. Rest of the uh, tags are common, which are HTML, head, title. These are common uh, elements uh, that you have to use in your HTML code. So I'm saving this code with form input.html file name. And this file is available in my HTML folder. So I'm opening it with Google Chrome. So you can see the output form input.html file is open. First name is caption, then input type text, then last name is caption and then input type text. So I can enter information in these text boxes. So I have entered my first name and my last name. So with the help of input type text, you can create text boxes so that user can provide some inputs. Right now you are not, uh, you cannot uh, store these information in the database because our HTML script is not connected with any server side scripting language. So if you, if you want to connect your HTML script with any server side scripting language, then you have to use this action attribute in form tag. So it is mentioning action equals to action underscore page dot PHP. So at last you can see input type submit is available this will create submit button so if you click on this submit button then control will automatically transfer to this php script and then this php script will be executed so that the input can be received by this php script and later on that can be stored inside database so this is the way through which you can connect your html script with any server side scripting language so now I am going to demonstrate you how you can implement in your code. So suppose I am typing the name test.php. So for submission, I have to Im implement submit button. So I am writing input type submit and I am mentioning its value submit. So this value will appear on the uh, caption of the button. So if I click on this submit button, then control will automatically transfer to test.php. So I am saving this code. 
moving to the web browser and I am clicking on reload or refresh. You can see that a submit button has appeared here. Name of this button is submit because I have entered this value here. So input type is submit. So it will create submit button and this name will appear on the button. If you change this name, the button name will also get changed. Now I am entering my first name and last name. Now if I click on this submit button, see what is going to happen. This form.html will transfer control to test.php. So I am clicking on this submit button. So you can see the browser's address bar. Here test.php is available and first name and last name has been passed to test.php. Right now this file is not available. That's why an error message is available. Your file not, was not found. So if your uh, PHP script is available and it is connected with your HTML code, then you can transfer the input data which is available in the form into any server side scripting language, whether it is PHP or JSP or ASP or any other scripting language. So friends, I hope you have understood how you can connect your HTML script with any other scripting language. Moving forward, another input type attribute is value. So in, in these text boxes, type attribute is available, name attribute, uh, name attribute is available. Now I am providing value attribute and I am mentioning value is Mickey. So what does it mean? It means this becomes default value of this input tag. So I am moving to browser and I am clicking on refresh. First I have to save this code using control S. Now I am refreshing it. You can see that first name Mickey is displayed here, but last name is blank. So if you want to provide some default values for input text, then you can use value attribute here. Now if you type any other name, then this default value will be replaced and you can type any other name that you want to enter. Next is read only. So if you want to create your values read only so that uh, you cannot modify that value, you can use read only attribute here. So I have implemented read only and I have saved my code moving to web browser and clicking on refresh. So you can see that I am not able to uh, modify this value because cursor is not appearing here but I, am, I can type anything in last name. So with the help of this read only attribute you can convert your text box in read only mode. Next is disabled. So this disabled uh, attribute is unusable and unclickable. So I am implementing this also. So you can see that with the help of disabled, this input uh, text box, this input text box is disabled. I can't click in this text box. I can't, I can't do anything with this text box, but I can do anything uh, in last name text box. So this is done with the help of disabled attribute. Next one is size. So with the help of size, you can uh, define initial size of the text box. So I am providing size equals to 50. Moving to web browser and clicking on refresh. So you can see that minimum text size of this text box is 50 now. So if you want to provide some initial size for the text box, you can provide size attribute. Next is max length. So this is maximum limit of the text box. You cannot go beyond this limit. So now I am implementing this.
I am saving the code and moving to the web browser clicking on reload so I am typing Sanjay Gupta you can see I, I am not able to type anything after this T because Sanjay contain six letters and GUPT contain four letters so total ten letters I have typed so max length is 10 so that I can't type beyond this limit so with the help of this attribute you can limit the uh, input of the user and last one is placeholder so you might have seen uh, that uh, whenever we are entering some text on uh, text boxes some hint is already available on that text boxes so you can use placeholder property to provide that hint suppose right now placeholder values enter your name so this enter your name will become hint for my text box so i have saved this code moving to the web browser and i'm clicking on reload i have to remove this value because it is replacing placeholder now you can see that first name text box is providing a hint enter your name so if I click on this text box and I type something then that placeholder value automatically disappears so you might have uh, seen this placeholder in uh, various uh, forms where you provide some inputs so you can use this uh, placeholder property in your forms so that you can provide some kind of hints to your users so friends I have demonstrated you uh, many things about input element you can do these exercises on your system so that you uh, you will be able to understand how you can create input element in forms thank you for watching this video